So it's been a while since I've done a video, and I've had a lot of things going on, but uh, a company reached out to me and wanted me to try out their new digital microscope, so I said, sure, why not, send it, and uh, here it is. So we'll see how good it is and see if it works for soldering and general observation of circuit boards and whatnot. So let's give it a shot and see what it does. So this is a Moisui, 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 sure, we'll call it that. It's a Moisui digital microscope. And I believe this is around the $100 to $120 range. Um, I'll, I'll put a link in the description. And it's 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 not bad. It's probably going to be a beginner microscope. It's not going to be like a stereo microscope, like uh, the quality of the stereo microscope you've seen on my channel. But I'm sure it's it's good enough to do um, you know general work with it. And it looks like it has a remote control for probably zoom. Um, you get a, actually a screen on here, so... You'll be able to do it directly without running it into a computer or anything, I assume. So we'll uh, we'll see how it is, see how the latency is, see if it's you, know, you can actually do work under it uh, versus can you just observe objects under it. Because if there's any kind of delay in these microscopes, that can cause a problem because as you're coming in with solder and solder and iron and you're watching the screen, if there's uh, uh, even the slightest bit of latency, it can throw you off and it will be just a nightmare to solder with. So we're going to determine if this, if this is good enough to solder with or if it's just good enough to uh, just for general observation of circuit boards. All right, so we're going to open it up, see what the packaging looks like. And here we go. We got a manual. Mitsui, Moisu, Moisu, digital microscope, model MDM9. Instruction manual. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it looks fairly decent. You got some color photos in there. Uh, base. Looks like it has maybe a couple of lights. Uh, touch screen. Well, not. I don't know if it's a touch screen, but it's a it's a screen. It looks to be about maybe a seven inch display. Uh, it's tilt. Okay, remote. Light light barrier. Okay, I don't know what that is yet, but uh, the function of light barrier is to reduce the reflection when doing micro soldering. Oh, okay, so it does specify soldering in the manual, so that is a good sign. Uh, so the latency should be fairly low on this. Let's see if there's any tech specs in the back. Oh, here we go. There's the tech specs if anybody's interested. So let's see what we got in the box. Looks like we got a remote control. Yeah, fairly cheap, but probably good enough to do the job. Okay, it looks like you got some kind of power and signal or something. I don't know what's going on here. That's kind of funky, but we'll see what happens with that. We got the screen. Wow. Okay, so this looks like the screen and the microscope all in one unit here. And it looks like I can see the lights down the bottom, the illumination. I hope that you can sh turn on and off quadrants because sometimes when you're soldering, you, it does help to reduce reflections. Well, so we'll see how that works out. It looks like you have a manual zoom or a manual focus. Uh, a few power buttons on the bottom or function buttons. Looks good. Not very heavy fairly light it looks like everything mostly all the all the heavy lifting is done right here and I think the rest is just going to be lighting and stuff so there's that plate that we're talking about in the manual just plastic it it's not metal but it looks cr looks chromed out and on the bottom here we have the base along with the lights all right, now the base has got some weight. That's definitely like a, uh, I'd say an aluminum plate. And maybe the screws into here for the stand. Some more lighting. Well, that's going to help. Absolutely. We want more lighting. Anytime you're under a microscope, sometimes the lighting is not very good on a high magnification. So we're going to move the box out of the way. 
and see if we can just assemble this by looking at things. There's not too many parts here, so it looks like this clips on. Okay, so it looks like we can have an adjustment rail here. This is probably how it all goes together. Okay, yep. So you screw this into the base, and then you screw the microscope into this. So that's not too bad. It looks like you have a little locking screw, so we'll just put that in here, turn it around. So you're probably going to get it just to the point where it gets to this point. So we're going to have to probably go one rotation back and then use that little nut down here to center it up. So one rotation back. And we'll just lock it down like that. And we'll put that like that for now. And the microscope looks like it just sits inside here. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I'm not sure where this piece yet goes. I'll have to look at the book again for this piece, but that is basically it assembled. It only took a, a moment to put it together. And it looks like we got some kind of... What is that? Oh, that looks like the, uh, the lighting. Uh, maybe a dimmer for the lighting. Dimmer and maybe possibly power. So, uh, not too bad. All right, so I'm going to figure out the rest of these gizmos and how they all go together, and then I will come back here in just a second, and we'll fire it up and see how it looks. All right, so I have the microscope all set up here, and I'm going to throw just a coin under there for now, see how that looks. And we'll back up here and review the screen. That doesn't look too bad. Uh, you can adjust the lighting in the back here to adjust the spots. Let's make it back out. So we can adjust the spot of the or the intensity of the lighting. Now, if lighting is always tricky with microscopes because depending on the object that you're looking at, the reflections can definitely cause an issue with the uh, contrast of the image. Basically it'll, it'll get washed out or you won't be able to see anything on the board or uh, coin. It'll just look like a, a circular object. Uh, let's see, let's put this board under here real quick. And we kind of see that here. So we can zoom in. With the LED lighting with this configuration is not all that great because you can see the reflections off the solder mask and it kind of washes out the image. It is a blue board. Um, it, it looks somewhat blue, but you know, the, the screen and the camera, that's, I'm, I'm not worried about color, but it does look a little bit washed out. These are uh, white silk screen on a blue board and you can kind of almost not be able to see it correctly. So I'm going to try and change out to that other adapter for the light. And that, you just pull this piece off. It's a little firm. But this piece here has a set of hooks that go in there and hook. I wish this piece had that too. Uh, would not probably make it a little bit more fragile to have it that way. But I suppose it works. And right away we can already see that it looks much better. The lighting is a little bit more controlled. I wouldn't say the contrast is all that great on this particular board, but that's not terrible. It's, you don't see the LED reflections as much anymore. As for latency, it's not bad. It's pretty, pretty close. Uh, almost indistinguishable. I, I, I really would be hard pressed. Uh, maybe just slight hair delay. It's not terrible. And 
Um, we're in video mode right now on the screen. And if you hold down the M button, I believe from the manual, it changes to images. And here's a, a MOSFET uh, part. And you can, you can barely see the silk screening on there. And that is the lighting, as I was saying, because if you don't have the right lighting, it's really nothing t too much to do with the camera or the scope. It's the angle of the lighting hitting the object. Uh, this happens on several hundred dollar scopes as well. This is not something that's uncommon. Uh, it happens on my Amano, which is a several hundred dollar scope. And it happens on, on all scopes. It all depends on the lighting and the way the angle of the camera faces the board and the reflections back from it. So I'm not going to complain too much about that. Let's see. The one thing I did realize is that this is as high as it goes, so this is as far out as you can zoom. So that coin, that one cent coin, is about as far back as you can go, and you can't even get the whole coin in there. Uh, that's not terrible. Um, if you wanted something that zoomed out a bit further, this might not be for you. If you want something that's going to be a little bit more detail and work within the confines of about a coin size, a uh, penny size, maybe a little, a lot, actually less from the top of Lincoln's head to his bow tie. So what's that? That's that's pretty small. So if you are working within maybe a half an inch area at the max height of this scope, I'm not aware of any other adjustments that can make that any different. Oh, this knob here just just adjusts the focus. So I don't think. Um, that is going to help us in that situation. But you can bring the scope down with this adjustment in the back and there's a wheel. And you can get pretty close up. I'm going to actually take that other piece off here. And you can use these other lights to light your image. I'm just going to lock it there for now and focus back. So I mean you can get really close in there. But we're talking Where's the tip of my soldering iron? Uh, yeah, that's the tip of my soldering iron right there. So that's how much that's zooming in right now. And there's not really too much depth of field either. So if you are soldering something, you got to be pretty close to the plane of focus. One, I mean, my, my solder iron is about 100 thousands off the coin right now. And then that's right on the coin. So we have a little bit of... Um, well, of course, the more you focus in, the more that's going to be exaggerated. So if you're soldering this close, then it's probably not an ideal idea. You probably want to be, probably with this particular scope, you'd probably want to be all the way back to the top. And not only that, but the working distance. That is another issue, um, potentially for people, would be the working distance room. Uh, we're talking working distance with this collar on here of about, I'd say, I don't know, a good five, four or five inches right there. So if you if you are able to work within those confines of a four or five inches, that's fine. If you work on a board particularly this size or a bigger, uh, I wouldn't say any more than you know a six six inch board because you can't you can't get all the way in because of this post here. So obviously you're gonna be limited to how far back you can go on a board. One other thing I realized about this scope is it is battery powered as well. So once you charge the battery, you can remove the USB cord and it will run. Uh, it says it takes about two hours to charge. I didn't see any specification on how long it would last. So it may last, I don't know, half hour, hour, I don't know. So that's pretty good if you need something portable and, you know, so, I mean, you can take this out on the field or if you're uh, going somewhere that you don't have power, then that might be something that's worth it. I can't do that with my several hundred dollar one, but it's not that, that's not what it's made for. It's made to be on a bench mounted. So this is more of a portable microscope, quick and quick and easy. Um, I have tested most of the features. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, there's not too many, this, this is not groundbreaking on how complicated this gets. It's, it's pretty simple. It's just a, a button for recording and picture and, you know, setting up your different resolutions and modes. So it's, it's not super complicated. I it figured it out in about five minutes. 
So that's basically it on the scope. I don't think there's any much more to go into on detail. I, I mean, it is what it is. It's it's a it's around a hundred to hundred twenty dollar scope. I can't complain about um, its build quality because it's built to a price point. It actually comes with a screen. I mean, for a hundred dollars and you get a screen and a microscope and a stand and lights and SD card. Ah, I mean, that's 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 pretty good. I I, I know it's it's a you know, it's a, probably a branded, I don't, I'm not sure if this is branded on several other different kinds of scopes, but um, for this particular one, at this price point, I can't complain. The only thing I, like I said, if you're doing any soldering or anything like that, you might get a little bit um, annoyed at your working space. Uh, that's coming from me because I use the scope, the Amano scope, which has a 15, a roughly a 15 inch working distance to work in. And I also like a stereoscope because you can look down and you're seeing a live, actual live uh, image of what you're looking at. I mean, this is nice and all, but I'm not used to looking straight and working downward. So my hands are looking, my eyes are looking towards my hands when I'm on the Amano scope. When you're looking this way, it's going to take some time to get used to looking straight and working on something that your hands are below. Uh, it's just a, it's just a mind thing. It's just something that you're gonna have to just get used to. But for me, it's difficult because I've worked on a stereo microscope for so long. It's hard to use something like this. Um, but that doesn't mean it's bad and non-functional. It definitely works. And I'd say for the money, I mean, it's, it seems to be worth it. So if you want something quick and simple and not going to break the bank, then this scope might be for you. Uh, with that, I'm just going to end it here and, um, that's it. Have a great night.